In a previous micro lecture, we described the details of state diagrams. In this micro lecture, we will walk through a relatively simple example that demonstrates how we can design a sequential circuit with a state diagram. In this example, imagine that we have a circuit that receives a series of input bits one bit at a time. We want to design the circuit so that it outputs a 1 only when the circuit receives the bit sequence of 1010. Furthermore, the series of 1010 bits can be overlapping. To create this circuit, we will first create a state diagram. Then, we will determine the general structure of our circuit. Create a specialized truth table called the next state table. And finally, we will use the next state table to create our circuit. To begin, we will need a start state. For the start state, we will assume that the previous input bits did not resemble our desired input sequence at all. For each state, we will examine what will happen for every possible input value. We will also label our states with placeholder letters until we decide how to encode our states into bits. For this first state, if we receive an input of 0, we have not seen the first bit of our desired input sequence, so we transition back to the start state and show that we have not seen our desired input sequence. If we receive a 1, we have received the first bit of our desired input sequence, so we transition to a new state that records that we have seen the first bit of our desired input sequence. But we have not seen our desired input sequence yet. For the second state, if we receive a 0, we have received the second bit of our desired input sequence. So we transition to a new state that records that we have seen two bits of our desired input sequence. But we have not seen our desired input sequence yet. If we receive a 1, we have still seen only the first bit of our desired input sequence, so we transition back to the same state. And we have not seen our desired input sequence yet. For the third state, if we receive a 0, our sequence no longer matches any part of our desired input sequence, so we will transition back to the start state. If we receive a 1, we receive the third bit of our desired input sequence, so we transition to a new state that records that we have seen three bits of our desired input sequence. but we still have not seen our desired input sequence. For the fourth state, if we receive a zero, we have seen the desired input sequence. Because we have now also seen the beginning of another desired sequence, we transition back to the state that records that we have seen two bits of the desired input sequence. If we receive a one, we have failed to find the sequence, but we have seen the first bit of the sequence starting over. Since we need no more new states, and all of our states have a state transition for every possible input value, we will have completed our state diagram once we add a key for interpreting the state diagram. Since we have four states, we will need two flip-flops to encode our states with bits. We will also need combinational logic that determines how our states will transition, and we will need a combinational logic circuit that outputs when we have found the desired input sequence. To design this circuit, we will translate our state diagram into a next state table, which is essentially a truth table for sequential circuits. In the next state table, we want to list all possible current states and inputs and show how these state and input combinations result in the next state. This process is literally rewriting the state diagram into table form. We also will use the state transition labels to translate our circuit's outputs for the various state and input variable combinations.
now that we have our next state table, we need to encode our states with the flip-flop bits. Again, because we have four states, we'll use two state variables to encode the current state, and consequently we will use two state variables to encode what the next state will be after the clock edge. We can assign these bits arbitrarily, so we will use 0, 0 for A, 0, 1 for B, and so forth. Finally, we need to determine how to update the state of our flip-flops to execute the desired circuit. Because we are using D flip-flops, we want the inputs to the D flip-flops to match our desired next state. Now that we have a complete next state table, we see that we need to create two circuits to update the flip-flops, and one circuit to create the sequence recognizer's output. You could use either a truth table or kmap to design these combinational circuits. To design our sequential circuit, we first created a state diagram. Then, we determined the general form of our circuit. Then, we translated our state diagram into a next state table. And finally, we used that next state table to create our final circuit.